Hi there, this is going to be a quick video from Wii Man on how to properly fix the yellow light of death on the PlayStation 3 machine. Um, this video will also include the flux method, so I'll show you, I'll just kind of walk you through that and how this is all going to go. Now, as you can see, I've already got the PlayStation 3 completely apart, and I've also cleaned off the chips already. If you need instructions on how to actually take the machine apart, there's lots of other videos on YouTube that will get you up to this stage, so I'm just going to show you just the actual repair itself. Now the materials you need to do this, first off, um, can of, well this is goof off basically, it's just for removing the, uh, the thermal paste off the chips. I found this stuff at Home Depot, it's about four bucks a can. Works great and doesn't leave any residue. Second thing you're going to need is a bottle of rosin flux. This is the liquid flux. Um, it's available in most supply stores for about five to ten dollars, electronic supply stores. And said so that is an absolute necessity as far as I'm concerned. Um, so it basically comes a nice big bottle and get the big bottle because you're going to use a pretty liberal amount here. Uh, third thing you're going to need is a heat gun, which I've just got on the other side of the bench here. And said so my heat gun does not actually have a temperature control setting. It only has high and low. Um, I found the high setting is set at 450 degrees Fahrenheit and that seems to work just fine. Um, it was just a El Cheapo job mate that I picked up at the local local swap store and I think it cost me twenty dollars. Aside from that, you pretty much got everything you need except for cleaning materials, Q-tips, screwdrivers, all the basic stuff. Alright, now the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to have to support this board and basically get it onto a 45 degree angle like this and that's going to permit us to actually flow the flux underneath these chips and once it flows underneath, so that's actually going to be what reflows the solder. So just give me one second here, I'm going to prop this board and we'll move right along. Okay, so we got the board propped up, and as you can see it's just on a little bit of an angle there, just kind of leaning up against my bench, and that's going to be just fine for pouring the flux in here. So what you're going to do is you're actually going to be pouring the flux along here, and letting it drain underneath the chip and then onto the second one and drain underneath the chip again. And said so it will take a couple of minutes because this stuff is not fully liquid, it's pretty thick stuff. And on top of it I'll mention do not get this on anything you don't want it on because it is super super sticky and will take forever to clean off. Alright so here we go and you're going to use a pretty liberal amount here and basically I just pour onto the edge of the board you see I got it on the top of the chip there, you want to avoid doing that if you can. It's a real pain to clean this stuff off. So it's because I'm trying to do this one-handed for the first time. And you can see, kind of, it's just leaking underneath the chips there and flowing downwards nicely. Um, what I like to do is also just tilt the board a little bit while we're doing this, and that just helps flow it under the whole thing. Yeah, like I said, it'll take a couple of minutes and probably a couple of good liberal dousings with this stuff before you get it all the way under the board. Yeah, let's add a little more to the second chip. And it's flowing underneath quite nicely now. And you can see it just started pouring out here and over here. So again, I'm just going to tilt the board on the side here and just kind of let it run all over the place. Now some people say that you do have to clean this stuff off the board after it's finished because it is slightly acidic. Um, I tend to believe that, so it's probably a good idea. Um, I don't do, I would say I don't do exactly a really good job of cleaning it off, and I haven't had any problems since with flux buildup or anything else getting eaten. So it's up to you if you want to try to clean it off. As I said, this stuff is really sticky and really messy to clean off. Alright, so we've got that all done, and now before I go any further with the heat, I am going to clean any of the stuff off the tops of the chips, and that's just because once it actually cooks, the stuff, again, is really hard to take off. So I'm going to clean that, and then we'll come back for the heating process. Okay, we're back for step three here, which is to use our heat gun here, and we're going to heat the top side of this board first. Now, you do need a level, flat surface to put this on, something that's not going to burn. Don't do it on cardboard or, you know, your mom's kitchen counter. She's probably not going to be too happy with you. All right, and now, so basically what you're going to do is we're going to be heating this chip, 
chip and also the ICs over here and here. And I also like to go just a little bit around the extra on the board here just to make sure it's thoroughly heated. And now the nice thing about using the flux too is it'll give you a really good idea of when it's hot enough because the flux will start bubbling like crazy. Now you want to keep the unit about an inch and a half, two inches above, working a circular motion. Don't keep it in one place for too long. And just slowly just start heating the board. And I usually do this for about 45 seconds to a minute. And in a second you'll start to see the liquid flux will start bubbling out from under the ship. I don't know how good the video quality is on this, so you might not be able to see that. You see it starting to bubble there. And same thing over here, just keeping with constant motion. Okay, set that guy down. And now this is absolutely imperative that after you've done this, you do not want to touch or move this board in any way whatsoever. You will also notice the board has warped significantly, and that is completely normal. It will actually it'll straighten itself back out once it cools, so if you finish and you go, oh my god, my board's warped, don't worry about it, that's absolutely normal. And so we're going to leave this guy for about 10 or 15 minutes and let it cool down completely without touching it. And then we'll be back to do the bottom side.